Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to do this really pretty rose gold makeup tutorial. This has been inspired by some of my favourite Ray-Bans. These are my rose gold ones. I actually had these made on the website. I've had them for a few years now and the colour palette that I pulled out today actually had rose gold in it. So that is my inspiration for the look. On my skin I've got this new Dr. Jar BB Premium Beauty Balm SPF 50 on. It's incredible. I am obsessed with this. If you want a no makeup makeup product that will even out your skin but still look like skin give this a go some of you may have seen that i did a blue inspired makeup look the other week using a pat mcgrath eyeshadow palette this is the other one that i purchased as i said it has a really beautiful duochrome rose gold finish that resembles the finish to my sunglasses and this is the divine rose palette so i'm going to start off with this extreme mahogany which is a warm toned dark brown in a matte finish and using my mac 286 duo fiber blending brush i'm going to buff this through the socket of the eye because i don't have an actual foundation laid down and it is a matte finish it does go on slightly patchy but these are so creamy that if you keep buffing it in in circular motions you'll get a really lovely even finish to the eyeshadow i will of course link the brush down below as well as the eyeshadow palette and all the products that i use in today's tutorial i'll even link the dr jart balm because you have to try it it's incredible here I'm just using my finger to tap the seams into the skin. It blends in because we've got an SPF down. Next I'm going into this shade which is an iridescent pink. It looks white in the palette but when you lay it down it's like a cool toned pink and it has a duochrome pearl finish to it which is so pretty. You can of course use a brush to apply this but I feel like these kind of eyeshadows really go on better when you use your finger. So just pat this on and we're pressing this on the inner half of the mobile lid. The star of the show for this look is this next eyeshadow. This is called VR Rose Venus. Again, we're going to apply this with our finger and this is going on the halfway mark of the eye and then we're going to pat it backwards and slightly forwards to meet the pink iridescent shade. This is a really nice warm toned medium dark coral and it has a metallic finish but it also is like a duochrome. When you turn your head, it really does have that flip colour. This is what gives it that rose gold finish and matches the kind of shades that I have on my rose gold Ray-Bans. This palette is an expensive one, however, Pat McGrath's website, as well as the retailers that sell her products, often have these on discount, and I managed to get mine at 25% off. Now we've laid down our main colours, I'm going back to the Extreme Mahogany Brown and I'm going to buff this on the outer third of the mobile lid. So we are going over the Rose Venus shade just on the outer third. This is going to create more dimension and shape to the eye. When you're working in circular motions to buff this out, feel free to either keep it more rounded if you have slightly hooded eyes or if you like to wing it out to create a bit more of an elongated shape, feel free to do that as well. I always like to pull my colours out slightly just to give the eyes a bit more of a lifted finish. To brighten around the eye, I'm going to take the Huda Beauty Faux Filter Concealer. I'm using the shade Coconut Flakes, which is a neutral undertone. And I'm bouncing that underneath the eyes using a damp beauty blender. You can see how beautiful this sits on the skin. One of my favourite concealers for full coverage is definitely this one. It still looks like you're not really wearing anything, but it totally hides imperfections, dark circles, and it doesn't look cakey. I mean, you can see I'm really close up and it still looks fantastic. So as you can imagine, further away it's going to look even better. I'm loving this brush at the moment for working concealer in as well as foundation around areas that we have pores or texture. This one is by BK Beauty, but I can't remember which number it is, but I will list it below for you. When I go back upstairs, I will check the number. You can see that I don't want to get the sponge right in the corner of the eyes because I've already done the eyeshadow. So using a brush, I can pat this in, which results in a really lovely finish. And it means I can lightly tap it up to meet that eyeshadow and just take down a little bit of the redness. You can do this before eyeshadow, but sometimes I like to do it after because I can tap it in and clean up. I'm now going to go underneath the eyes and frame them. So I'm going back in with the Extreme Mahogany Brown and on a small brush, I'm buffing this in underneath the lower eyelash line. We'll get a nice blend because we've got that concealer in place and we've not set it. So it means you can get a really nice blend of the eyeshadow. Once you've set it in place, it can be harder to blend out. But if it's blending into something that's got a little bit of slip, you get a really beautiful gradient. And then you can set everything in place after. Along my waterline, I'm taking the Huda Beauty Creamy Coal in the shade Very Brown. 
she also does this in very black and if you want to see my short on this i will link it on screen for you it's incredible these do not move they have the most incredible staying power so i'm taking that along my waterline and i'm tight lining with that too Next up, I'm moving on to mascara. This one is by Sweet Beauty, and it's a cloud mascara. So I'm going to give my eyelashes a little curl with my favourite curler. This is by Refa. And then I'm going to apply a coat of mascara. I'll apply two coats to my top lashes, one to my lower, and then I'm going to go in with some cluster lashes just to give the eyes a little bit of a winged out shape. However, you can just apply mascara. You can see it looks beautiful alone with mascara. You don't have to apply any falsies. I'm going for a bit of an eyelash shed at the moment. So that's why I want to apply little cluster lashes just on the outer third, maybe like four or five, just to fill in and make them look a little fuller on that outer edge. On the top right hand corner of the screen I'm going to link my eyelash playlist if you're somebody that struggles with eyelash application I will show you how to apply strip lashes, ribbon eyelashes, individual clusters, there is something there for everybody. I also have eyelash hacks so if you're somebody that struggles with strip lashes I have a wonderful hack on how to apply those. These eyelashes are just some individual clusters I think they're about 12 millimeters and I'm applying four or five of those on the outer edge. I'm now gonna move back onto the face. I'm using one of my favorite everyday foundations. This is the number seven Restore and Renew Serum Foundation. It's so lightweight and very serum-like and it goes on beautifully. And whenever I wear this, I always get asked what foundation I'm wearing. In fact, two people just last week asked me, they took a note of it down and then messaged me to tell me they'd already purchased it. It gives a light to medium coverage, it's definitely buildable and as I said it feels super natural because it's got lots of skincare ingredients and the idea is it's been designed to be like a serum so it's very very lightweight. It does contain an SPF of 30 but as I always say always apply a standalone SPF under any of your makeup if you want protection. They currently have 18 shades available but because it is so lightweight I feel like some of those shades would be quite universal. The more you build it up obviously the more it would need to match your skin tone exactly but the four people that have purchased this that I've met in the flesh have all bought the same shade as me and they've all said it's been great so I would say it's definitely quite universal because it's so lightweight. I've had this a while but I don't think I've ever used it. This is the Rosie for Autograph Killer Contours in Starstruck. I think that's the shade of it. And I'm popping a small amount of this down the sides of my nose. I'm also going to put it on the hollows of my cheeks and around my hairline. This is another super lightweight product. It looks intense but melts into the skin like butter. So if you're looking for a no makeup makeup product, this is great. I don't even know if it's still available. I don't know if this was part of a permanent line. If it is, I will link it below for you. I'm using the same foundation brush that I used a moment ago because it still has some foundation left within the bristles and this helps with the blending process. I'm using the brush to press the colour upwards rather than downwards so that we still get a nice shape to the hollows of our cheeks and the idea is to keep it where you've placed it so don't try and blend it out too far, try and keep blending over the same area that you've applied it with a tapping motion or a stippling motion and then you won't create a muddy mess. To be fair, you would be hard pushed for this to go wrong because the product really is so lightweight. You can of course also blend this in with a beauty blender. I'm just using a brush today. Because that base is so lightweight, I'm not concerned about disturbing the base makeup. I tend to reach for a beauty blender for blending when I'm using heavy or full coverage products. I'm gonna take some shine away from the skin using a finishing powder. This one is by Charlotte Tilbury. If you're particularly oily, I'm oily combination, not super oily, but if you are particularly oily, you might want to use a translucent setting powder as that's more heavy duty. For this, you can either use a sponge or you can use a powder puff. I was just using a sponge because I had it to hand, but a powder puff works equally as well. And I'm mostly keeping that to the T section of the face. Next, I'm gonna go in with this hybrid bronze highlighter blush. This is by Iconic London. It's called Kissed by the Sun. And the shade I'm using is called Hot Stuff. This is again very similar to the sunglasses and the eyeshadow. It almost has a gold pink flip. And I'm pressing that on to the apples of the cheeks and backwards using my Round Top 106 Foundation Brush by BK Beauty. On the lips, I'm using this lip gloss by Anastasia Beverly Hills in the shade Saint Tropez, which again has this really beautiful rose gold flip finish to it. 
I like to apply the colour and then buff that in with my fingers and then just pat away any excess with a tissue and then I'll just put some lip balm over the top and that completes my rose gold makeup tutorial inspired by my rose gold Ray-Bans and I will link the Ray-Bans if I can find them in the description bar for you. I will link all the products used as well as discount codes in the description bar. If you've got any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below and I'll do my best to get back to you. Please subscribe if you are new to my channel, it's free to do so. Hit the like button if you enjoyed today's look and I will see you in a couple of days with a new tutorial. Bye guys!